Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about how to create your first C++ program. So, to create a C++ program, you need a special editor. Of course, you can always use Notepad++, but to compile it, you need a special compiler called GCC 13 or 11. So, there are many editors available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, but if you don't want to to spend time with setting up the system, you can use an online editor called Replit. Replit is very useful for creating C++ programs and in fact it not only allows you to create C++ programs but actually any language that is currently in existence. So to create a repel, that is a program, you first need to create an account, it is free. And then, once you create your account, you have to hit new repel, or that plus button right here. And then select the language. In this case, it's already here. And we need to give a name to it. By default, it will, all, it will be setting some kind of name but for this video i'll just keep something else okay now hit create repel so now the editor will open by default it will already add the first text for this video i'll just remove it so to create a C++ program, we first need to include some very important libraries. You enter hashtag and then include. And then in the angular brackets, enter the uh, file you want to import. In this case, iostring. And then this is optional. You can also use uh, using namespace std. However, many programmers don't usually use this text because if a new library was released in STD that overrides another library, then that can cause problems, which is why we don't use STD, this using namespace STD. But for these C++ videos, I'll just include it. Next, we need to create the body of the code. That's called int main. That is, you type int and then the word main and then an opening and closing round bracket and then the curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets is where we enter our code. In this case, I will type route to uh, greater than brackets and then our text in quotes. and then another two angle brackets and then end l e n d l and then a semicolon let's hit run there you go the output came so what do you think cout is c out c o u t well it is the equivalent of print in python so cout would actually take whatever is passed here and print it out here. So these two angle brackets are used to separate one piece of text or anything from another piece of text or anything. So for example, if I wanted to print something else but not in the same quotes, I add another pair of angle brackets and between the, uh, the and in the empty space of the two angle brackets, I'll just enter whatever else I want to put. Now hit run. There you go. Now note that the angle brackets do not act as spaces. So even though there's two angle brackets between the hello world and the this whatever I typed, it won't mean that there will be a space between the two. So if you want to add a space, you'd either have to add a space at the end of the first quote 
or add a space at the beginning of the second quote. I'll just add at the beginning of the second. Okay, so that's exactly it. I'll just put something else right in that. Okay. So what is this end L? Now actually the program will run perfectly normal even without it. But you may notice something. Let's just put a side by side comparison. So here, so the stop line will be printing the same statement with an end L and the bottom line will be printing the same statement without an end L. Notice the difference. Okay. So right now, the first line got printed and then a new line got printed because of this end L. Want to see my proof? Well, let's remove the end L from the top line. You see, code doesn't automatically place the pointer, that is the thing that creates the characters, on a new line. Rather, it just stops there and then waits for a ne the next count, if there is any. So to move it to the next line, you use this end L. Alternatively, you can also just use this slash end. It also does the same thing, but to avoid confusion, they use, usually use end L. End, end, end L stands for end line, which makes sense because it ends this line and moves the cursor to the new line and then does anything next. You have also noticed that the part uh, that points to where the commands can be entered uh, is right now coming literally after the word yes. If I put the end L, it moves to the new line. So that's another piece of proof. So although this end L is not required, it is highly recommended because just to avoid any formatting errors. By the way, you can not only print text with the count function, but print, well, just about anything. If I wish to print 3, I'll type it like this. Count, 2 angle brackets, 3, another 2 angle brackets, and then end L. There you go. So I want to print it at decimal. accepts but you may notice that it rounds the decimal to the fifth place yeah that's a feature of count however there is a library library that can change that anyways if you wanted to print single characters you use single quote and then inside that single quote you use the character you want to print now, unlike Python, if you have seen that video, the double quotes and the single quotes are not the same. They are both different. In C++, the double quote stands for a string, that is just anything inside the quotes, but a single quote in C++ stands for a character, that is one single letter or number or symbol or anything so although i can put some strange things inside the single quotes okay that's not so strange but that doesn't mean that i can just put two things inside you see earlier it was just the brownish color and adding the second character changes it back to white and you can see this green line and if you hover over it you can see that it tells us that there is a multi-character character constant and if you run this it gives you a warning saying that multi-character character constant actually the same thing so it seems that the program has run properly but the warning says that this 
character constant which has more than one character may produce an error and well this error doesn't stop the program from running but it does create some strange thing this number 29540 this is actually the numerical representation of this character but removing that removes the warning and uh, creates the output as expected there's also one more thing to notice let's create a comment for the count statement the count statement specifically uses two greater than or greater than signs you know the one that seems to be pointing to the left it cannot use the other symbols the one that seems to be pointing to the right for example if i did something like this it does not accept and if you hover it will say that invalid operands to binary expression aka basic OS stream and constant chat so this is so that means it doesn't understand what this symbol does there's actually another operation called c in that actually uses these two symbols but for c out it uses the other symbol so it is important to make a distinction between the two of course you can not only print uh, the things directly you can also use variables but that will be for a, a later video so thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.